using your battery to power your house doesn't have to be difficult. We do it at home and we set this up for hundreds of our customers. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use my home battery to run my whole house, export as much solar as possible and earn the maximum amount of money for my system from the grid using some smart tariffs. So the point of this video is to go through all of that in detail on my home personal system and show you how you can use it on your systems as well. Now, we have Octopus Energy doing our electricity bills and we run the Intelligent Go Tariff and we also have an Alpha ESS battery system. So we'll get into all the details of our home setup, what panels we have, how they're geared up and how we manage the energy around our house. We have a great system with a lot of panels but it also has a few shortcomings that I'm going to explain in this video and it's part of the joy of being an early adopter and having our battery in for quite some time. So more modern systems are going to do this a lot more efficiently and because of that it's important to have it set up the right way. Now this doesn't have to be complicated, it's really easy to set up, leave it running and just forget about it and I'll show you in this video how that works for us at home. We very rarely check the system and even rarer do we make any settings changes. So follow along, I'm going to show you what's in our system, how it's set up and how you can set up yours as well. Okay, so this is my login for Alpha ESS Cloud Platform. Um, you can see here the system's live right now. So we're recording this on Friday the 9th of May. Um, it, it, it's half eight in the morning, so it's an early one. And you can see uh, when I go to today's generation, which is um, there, you can see that we've charged the battery overnight, battery's full, we've had some generation early this morning. So let's just give you a quick overview of the platform and then we'll dig a little bit more into the details of how the monitoring works. And I can show you how we use the system day to day. So this is the Alpha Cloud platform. I'll just move my beautiful face down into this bottom corner. Um, you get a real time graph up here, which is kind of an indication of what the system's doing right now. Um, it says real time, but then it also says 10 seconds data. So sometimes you can have your app in your hand, you can put the kettle on, it takes a few seconds to react. Um, so take it with a pinch of salt, because none of these systems seem to be 100% live. Usually the best way of seeing a live feed is if you stood in front of a um, an inverter with a screen, but more and more systems don't have screens nowadays, including the Alpha ESS. Um, but it goes to show here, look, there's um, 3.8 kilowatts of solar being produced on the roof right now. Our battery is doing nothing, zero watts. Um, 800 watts are being used in the house and 3 kilowatts are going out to grid. Now we we have 24 panels on our property. It's two systems. We've got a solar edge 12 panel system which is facing towards the east. So that was the original system that went in on its own with no solar. Um, in fact, that's wrong. The battery went in first. We put a battery in first of all and then we added the 12 panels onto the east face. Uh, then we expanded the battery uh, and then we added a further 12 panels which are end phase on the front face. Now, my system's a hybrid system in that it gets whatever thrown at it to test and try out any new product that I think might be good for customers. So if I see something on the market that looks really good, I'll try it at my house. So the Alpha B3 battery system that we have was a new to market product about three or four years ago. It looked like a really nice product, so I put one in at home. It's a three kilowatt inverter on the battery and it's 20 kilowatt hours of storage. So Ours isn't as quite as efficient as a new modern system where your battery inverter might be much bigger and you have a much larger throughput on that battery. So we'll show you in the diagrams why we get some bottlenecks from that and how a larger inverter on your battery can really help you with your system. Okay, so moving into the next things, which is the energy diagrams. So this diagram here will show you what power has gone where for the date range that you've chosen. And this is all available in the app as well as on the desktop. It's just easier to demonstrate it on the desktop, but it's very similar on the app. So the energy diagram, you can set your dates and you can see what's gone where. So let's have a look at hours for yesterday, which is the 8th of May. And it was a really cloudy day most of the day yesterday. Our solar produced 24 kilowatt hours. 
and 18 of that we actually sent out to grid. Um, you can see what's happened here, so 12 kilo hours came from battery, uh, 3.9 went into battery, uh, 13 went into the house, and 34 from the grid to the house. So you can see uh, 12 kilowatts from the battery to the grid it was, 17 from the battery to the home, 53 in total in the home. Now, sounds a lot, doesn't it? But what you've got to realize is we're fully charging the battery every night and then fully emptying it most nights as well. Now, what this means is we're getting 12 kilowatts out of the battery back to grid, and then we're immediately putting that 12 kilowatts and then some back in. Um, we're also topping up with solar, so our 20 kilowatt hour battery is working really hard. And on this sort of diagram, it's a bit tricky to um, demonstrate that, which is why this power diagram here is the one that I really prefer. Now, what you get is for today, it's giving us a predicted graph based on weather patterns. So if I really wanted to, I could look on every day, I could decide what the weather's going to be doing and have a forecast on my PV power. But what I actually do is never check this ever at all. So <laughs> I'll check in now and again to make sure things are running right. My normal point of sanity check is, is my smart meter display that's in the kitchen on green. And if it's on green, it means that we've probably used battery all day long. So that's a good indicator for me. And if I see something's red, I know there might have been something gone on. Maybe, my, maybe Octopus Energy boosted my car and it's been left plugged in by accident or something like that. But we can come to the integra integrations later on in this video. Okay, so what we have here is yesterday's generation. And as we've already said, um, the solar, you can see it's quite low throughout the whole day. And we only received 24 kilowatt hours. Now, some people might think that's fantastic. It's a lot of power. But obviously, remember, we've got 24 panels. So on a 12 panel system, you might have seen you know, 12 kilowatt hours for the day. Um, whereas the day before, 46. So big difference, you know. So you can see where these, these numbers are going. So any day, at any given time, you can see that this brown area here is us charging the battery. Okay, and you can see this is pretty consistent. Every day we're going to charge this battery during our cheap energy periods. Now the key for this is we're paying seven pence per kilowatt to buy this energy at night time. So all this time here where we've charged into the grid, you can see that we're only using um, 7p energy there to get this battery full. And this green diagonal line, that is the battery filling up. So it got to the point here where it's full. And you can see that the, the rate in the house dropped down and it went to a lower lower grid usage to eventually it stopped altogether. Okay, so what then happens is when the solar starts to come on, the battery is already full, so it goes out of the door. Now, for that going out the door to export, we're going to get 15 pence per unit paid for exporting. So you can see here, we matched our usage, the solar is covering the grid usage, and then all of a sudden it starts to export, and that's once the solar is um, exceeding our grid usage. So we're using quite a lot of energy in the home. We've got air conditioning, and on days like this where the sun's bright, the air conditioning's usually on. So you can see we have a lot of early morning air conditioning where we've left the air con overnight. Now, as the day got really hot, you can see most of our solar is going out to export. And you can tell this by removing all the other all the other items and just looking at how the feed-in is matching the solar. So most of the day, feed-in is matching the solar. And then we come to an evening period, and we've got this evening period here where we're still generating from the panels, and then we turn the battery on to export at about 6 o'clock. So the sun's starting to go down. We're turning the battery to maximum export. Remember I said earlier we've got a three kilowatt battery. So three kilowatt export is gonna start dumping everything to grid at three kilowatts. Now, in the peak of the day, our solar is reaching you know, eight and a half kilowatts coming in, but the battery can only get three in or out. So when I come around to your house, I sit down and I give you a quote, and you say, oh, I've got a quote on a give energy system, and I say, well, the batteries can only import and export three kilowatts. You can see where this might be a problem. 
when I say go for an alpha ESS system with a five kilowatt import and export rate, this whole area here will be just lifted up by two kilowatts. So you're going to be able to get more in and more out of the battery in a hurry. So when you're exporting or force importing, you, can, you need a shorter time period to fill that battery. Also, it means that if your battery is empty in the day, and we'll go back to winter and have a look what that looks like, you can, you can get more in and out when you're needing it and there's no solar. So it's always useful to have a bigger inverter on that battery. Tesla Powerwalls are great at this, 11 kilowatt inverter, fantastic. Um, Alpha SS, five kilowatt inverter, so really good. The, the systems on the market, such as my older system, three kilowatt inverter, give energy with a three, I think three or 3.6 on their inverters for the battery pass-through rate. So you can end up with a five kilowatt inverter for your solar, but the battery pass-through is capped at three or 3.6 kilowatts. So you've got to bear this in mind when you're trying to spec your system. If you are, you know, just a couple on your own in the house and you've not got a massive amount of energy usage, you've not got multiple appliances on at once, you might think that this, this still won't affect you. However, if you are looking at emptying your battery to grid and you want to get it all out within a set time period, such as three hour window with Octopus Flux, you might not be able to get it empty during that time period. And this is where we can run into issues on our home system. If we go to Octopus Flux, we can't empty the battery in three hours. So it's less uh, beneficial to us. So Octopus Intelligent Go is the one that is the winner for us. Okay, so, some other things to note with this then. Um, we'll look at what's been consumed. You can see here, we're consuming from the grid all through the afternoon, uh, sorry, all through the evening to charge the battery. We're then consuming from the grid early evening, again, when we turn the battery on to charge at 11 p.m. Or that might have been the car to charge. It probably would have been, looking at the, looking at the rates, it probably would have been the car. What you might notice is that during tea time, we're also consuming from the grid. However, we do have a full battery and you can see the battery is really full here. And the issue is we can only import and export three kilowatts at once from the battery. So we're using all available solar and we're topping it up from the battery. And because our usage is higher than this, which you can see here, quite high usage, <clears throat> we're actually having to draw from grid as well. Now what's probably happened here is my wife's come home and plug a car in because she wants to charge for the next day. Octopus have decided to give us free energy. Yay, thanks Octopus, that's great. So, or cheap energy, but what Octopus doesn't know is that we have a battery that isn't integrated. So the battery can't sh shut itself off. So in this instance, what I'd normally do is just leave the car to put it on later. Because quite often between 3 and 5 p.m., Octopus Intelligent in the summer will give you a cheap rate. So we'd have only paid 7p for all this energy we've used. However, it has dumped out the battery so that when we forced export at night, the battery became empty um, sooner than I'd normally expect it to. Okay, so that gives you an idea of a general day today. Now I'm just going to stick it back a random number of days. Um, there you go. And we'll go, what are we on here? So. That's another sunny day in April this time, 44 kilowatt hours, same story. So we're charging up at night, we're getting some peaks in the day on the solar. Uh, you can see our feed in there, which has matched our solar usage. And we've sent 39 kilowatt hours back to the grid. We only generated 44, most of it's gone out the door, which is great. We've also topped up from the battery. So this 24 kilowatt hours that we've bought from the grid, as you can see, the times we've bought it at um, mostly is going to be really low trickle usage. If you look at this, not kilowatts, so really low usage throughout the day. So it's almost impossible to have zero usage. Um, but there's some spikes when we've got multiple appliances going. You know, in the morning, microwave, air fryer, dishwasher is probably all running at the same time or something like that maybe the washing machine or something. So multiple appliances on the same time. Now, if you wanted to, you could you could really get these spikes lower. Okay, bigger battery would help, bigger inverter on the battery. But the main thing that would help would be splitting your appliance usage. Now, we're not bothered about that. We'd rather have an easy life at home, not worry too much about having everything on at once. 
if we want the electric heating on at the same time as the kettle, I'm, I'm not fussed. You know, we, we do it all at once. Some people might think I can get rid of these peaks by spacing out my appliance usage so it's not all on at the same time. And that's fine, each to their own with that. And overall, every person can run the same system in a different way. And that's one of the beauties of these alpha systems is that for the person who wants to set and forget, they're going to work really well. And for the person who wants to micromanage it every single day, it's also going to work really well. Now, what we've got here is the car charging again. So you can see 8 kilowatts at night, car charging up at night. Now, one of the things we could do if I wanted to, and we do this a lot for customers, is remove the car charger from the battery altogether. So the battery won't know that there's a car charger there, won't be able to interact with it, but the car charger could still use an export of solar. Now, for us, we don't want to do any of that, we want to sell it all. Um, and I'm not that bothered about the odd time where my car charges in the data cheat rate. Uh, it, it doesn't really worry me too much. If it's bothering you, you can wire the charger. And I've done another video on this. You can wire the charger so it's not seen by the battery at all. So you don't get the instances where the charger comes on automatically in the middle of the day and empties your battery. But for us, it's not the end of the world. A three kilowatt battery coming on for an hour, it's only going to drop three kilowatt hours into the car. It's not the end of the world. So I'm, I'm really not that fussed about that. If I had an 11 kilowatt hour, 11 kilowatt inverter on my Tesla and it dumped 11 kilowatts out of the battery into the car in an hour, or maybe seven into the car in an hour, um, might be a different story. So for us, it's not priority. Even though I'm an electrician and I could wire it all myself, it's not the end of the world for us. Uh, again, the next system over, you can customize it as much as you like. And that's the beauty of these alpha systems. Okay, so that's um, that's some of the day-to-day the -day stuff. And that's the, that's the view that I'd normally go into. I'd click on this power diagram here and I'd just glance at what happened yesterday and, and take it from there. Let's go back and look at something over the winter. Um, pick a random day in January. Again, you can see here we've got car charging overnight. Battery didn't quite get full this time. Now what's probably happened is <clears throat> my three kilowatt inverter wasn't long and on for long enough to actually get 20 kilowatt hours into the battery. Probably only, it was if it was all the way empty, might have only managed 18. Um, so, you know, the advantage of bigger inverters are apparent here. You can make sure that you really get all the energy you need into the battery in the time period you've got to charge it. I think since then, Octopus Intelligence changed its timings as well. It's given us an extra hour, which was really helpful for us because now we're getting six hours. Um, we can get 18 kilowatt hours in. It's, it's usually filling the battery. So overall, a lot, a lot less solar here. So we're not seeing hardly an export at all. We, we've got you know, 41 kilowatt hours. And because of that, we're not force charging the battery back to grid neither. So during the seasonal times of the year, we're changing the settings of the battery. Not doing it all the time. I'm not in there day to day changing things around. But, you know, spring, autumn, I'm going to have a look at those settings and I'm going to make a decision at some point to change the settings on the batteries. And um, that's how it works for me. So that wraps up another video. Thank you so much for watching. If this has been helpful, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment if you have any questions. Don't forget, we are actually installers, so I'm not just a homeowner with solar panels on my house. I have them on my business as well, and we install them for hundreds of customers all around the Midlands. So Electrical Innovations is the company name. We're based in Derby, and we'll be more than happy to help with your system. Uh, our contact details are in the description below. Also, I'll stick them up on the screen as well, mate. So sort of here, or maybe here, you know, it's that YouTube thing. So, um, yes, thanks very much for watching. We've got loads more videos like this. The idea of these is not only do I want to um, put information out there to help people on the internet find out information. These videos are also useful to our customers. So after we've fitted a system, we can show a video and say, look, this is how you use it. So it's ongoing support and help for people who are um, having systems from us. So you can watch this video and know it's not just someone talking about marketing. It's actually someone who's talking about useful information that's going to help you in the real world if you have a solar system. Um, or if you're thinking about one, you can come to us to learn all this information. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.